Catalan nationalism is the ideology asserting that the Catalans are a nation. Intellectually, Catalan nationalism can be said to have commenced as a political philosophy in the unsuccessful attempts to establish a federal state in Spain in the context of the First Republic. Valenti Almiral I. Lozer and other intellectuals that participated in this process set up a new political ideology in the 19th century, to restore self-government, as well as to obtain recognition for the Catalan language. These demands were summarized in the so-called Bases de Manresa in 1892. It met very little support at first. But after the Spanish-American War in which the United States invaded and annexed the last of the Spanish colonies, these early stages of Catalanism grew in support, mostly because of the weakened Spanish international position after the war and the loss of the two main destinations for Catalan exports Cuba and Puerto Rico. <laughs> Several forms of contemporary Catalan nationalism Being a broad movement, it can be found in several manifestations in the current political scene. Most of the main Catalan political parties Catalan European Democratic Party, Republican Left of Catalonia, Socialists Party of Catalonia, and Comu Podem, and Popular Unity Candidature adhere to Catalanism to varying degrees. The scope of their national objectives diverges. While some restrict them to Catalonia proper alone, others seek the acknowledgement of the political personality of the so-called Catalan countries, the Catalan-speaking territories as a whole. Such claims, which can be seen as a form of pan-nationalism, can be read in official documents of CIU, ERC and Popular Unity Candidates Cup. Besides Catalonia, the main Catalan-speaking regions have their own nationalist parties and coalitions which support, to varying degrees, the demands for the building of a national identity for the Catalan countries, Valencian Nationalist Bloc BNV in the Valencian Community, Bloc Nacional I de Squares, PSM and Majorcan Union UM in the Balearic Islands. Other nationalist parties have existed with additional affiliations such as PSC, Regroupement whose leader Josep Palic i Carola died in 1977. The two main Catalan nationalist parties have shown their commitment to the idea of the Catalan countries in different ways and with different intensities. For CIU, this issue is not among the main items in their agenda. Nevertheless, the CIU has enjoyed a long-term collaboration with the Valencian Party BNV and with the Majorcan Parties UM and the Socialist Party of Majorca PSM. In contrast, Esquerra Republicana de Catalunya ERC has taken more substantial steps in that direction by expanding the party to Roussillon, Balearic Islands and as Republican left of the Valencian country ERPV the Valencian community. The origins of Catalan national identity During the first centuries of the Reconquista, the Franks drove the Muslims south of the Pyrenees. To prevent future incursions, Charlemagne created the Marca Hispanica in 790 CE, which consisted of a series of petty kingdoms serving as buffer states between the Frankish kingdom and Al-Andalus. Between 878 and 988 CE, the area became a hotbed of Frankish Muslim conflict. However, as the Frankish monarchy and the Caliphate of Cordoba both weakened during the 11th century, the resulting impasse allowed for a process of consolidation throughout the region's many earldoms, resulting in their combination into the county of Barcelona, which became the embryo of today's Catalonia. By 1070, Ramon Berenguer I, Count of Barcelona, had subordinated other Catalan counts and intransigent nobles as vassals. His action brought peace to a turbulent feudal system and sowed the seeds of Catalan identity. According to several scholars, the term Catalan and Catalonia emerged near the end of the 11th century and appeared in the USHs of 1150. Two factors fostered this identity stable institutions and cultural prosperity. While the temporary lack of foreign invasions contributed to Catalonia's stability, it was not a major cause. Rather, it provided a zone for socio-political development. 
For example, after the county of Barcelona signed an agreement with the Kingdom of Aragon, to create the Crown of Aragon in 1137 through a dynastic union, the system was designed to mutually check both the king's and the nobility's powers, while the small but growing numbers of free citizens and bourgeoisie would tactically take sides with the king in order to diminish typically feudal institutions. By 1150, the king approved a series of pacts, called the USHs, which explicitly acknowledged legal equality between burghers, and nobility." Woolard 17. In addition, the Aragonese gentry established the courts, a representative body of nobles, bishops, and abbots that counterbalanced the king's authority. By the end of the 13th century, the monarch needed the consent of the courts to approve laws or collect revenue. Macroberts 10. Soon after, the courts elected a standing body called the Diputacio del General or the Generalitat, which included the rising upper bourgeoisie. The first Catalan constitutions were promulgated by the courts of Barcelona in 1283, following the Roman tradition of the Codex. In the 13th century, King James I of Aragon conquered the Valencia and the Balearic Islands. Subsequent conquests expanded into the Mediterranean, reaching Sardinia, Corsica, Sicily, Naples and Greece, so by 1350 the Crown of Aragon presided over one of the most extensive and powerful mercantile empires of the Mediterranean during this period. Woolard 16. Catalonia's economic success formed a powerful merchant class, which wielded the courts as its political weapon. It also produced a smaller middle class, or Menestralia, that was composed of artisans, shopkeepers and workshop owners." Macroberts 11. Over the 13th and 14th centuries, these merchants accrued so much wealth and political sway that they were able to place a significant check on the power of the Aragonese crown. By the 15th century the Aragonese monarch "...was not considered legitimate until he had sworn to respect the basic law of the land in the presence of the courts." Balcells 9. This balance of power is a classic example of pactismi, or contractualism, which seems to be a defining feature of the Catalan political culture. Along with political and economic success, Catalan culture flourished in the 13th and 14th centuries. During this period, the Catalan vernacular gradually replaced Latin as the language of culture and government. Scholars rewrote everything from ancient Visigothic law to religious sermons in Catalan Willard 14. Wealthy citizens bolstered Catalan's literary appeal through poetry contests and history pageants dubbed the Jocks Florals, or Floral Games. As the kingdom expanded southeast into Valencia and the Mediterranean, the Catalan language followed. The medieval heyday of Catalan culture would not last, however. After a bout of famine and plague hit Catalonia in the mid-14th century, the population dropped from 500,000 to 200,000 this exacerbated feudal tensions, sparking serf revolts in rural areas and political impasses in Barcelona. Financial issues and the burden of multiple dependencies abroad further strained the region. In 1410, the king died without leaving an heir to the throne. Finding no legitimate alternative, leaders of the realms composing the Crown of Aragon agreed by means of the Compromise of Casp that the vacant throne should go to the Castilian Ferdinand I, as he was among the nearest relatives of the recently extinguished House of Barcelona through a maternal line. The new dynasty began to assert the authority of the crown, leading to a perception among the nobility that their traditional privileges associated with their position in society were at risk. From 1458 to 1479, civil wars between King John II and local chieftains engulfed Catalonia. During the conflict, John II, in the face of French aggression in the Pyrenees, had his heir Ferdinand married to Isabella I of Castile, the heiress to the Castilian throne, in a bid to find outside allies. Balcells 11. Their dynastic union, which came to be known as the Catholic Monarchs, marked the de facto unification of the Kingdom of Spain. At that point, however, de jure both the Castile and the Crown of Aragon remained distinct territories, each keeping its own traditional institutions, parliaments and laws. This was a common practice at this time in Western Europe as the concept of sovereignty lay with the monarch. With the dawn of the Age of Discovery, led by the Portuguese, the importance of the Aragonese possessions in the Mediterranean became drastically reduced and, alongside the rise of Barbary pirates predating commerce in the Mediterranean, the theatre of European power shifted from the Mediterranean basin to the Atlantic Ocean. These political and economic restrictions impacted all segments of society. 
Also, because of locally bred social conflicts, Catalonia squandered in one century most of what it had gained in political rights between 1070 and 1410. Nevertheless, early political, economic and cultural advances gave Catalonia a mode of organization and an awareness of its own identity which might in some ways be described as national, though the idea of popular or national sovereignty did not yet exist." Valsells 9. Other scholars like Kenneth McRoberts and Catherine Woolard hold similar views. Both support Pierre Villar, who contends that in 13th and 14th centuries, the Catalan Principality was perhaps the European country to which it would be the least inexact or risky to use such seemingly anachronistic terms as political and economic imperialism or nation-state. Macroberts 13. In other words, an array of political and cultural forces laid the foundations of Catalan national identity. Libera agrees with this opinion, saying. By the mid-13th century, the first solid manifestations of national consciousness can be observed." Indeed, 13th and 14th century Catalonia did exhibit features of a nation-state. The role of Catalan counts, the courts, Mediterranean rule and economic prosperity support this thesis. But as Villar points out, these analogies are only true if we acknowledge that a 14th century nation-state is anachronistic. In other words, those living in Catalonia before latter-day nationalism possessed something like a collective identity on which this was to be based, but this does not automatically equate to the modern concept of nation, neither in Catalonia nor elsewhere in similar circumstances during the Middle Ages. The courts and the rest of the autochthonous legal and political organization were finally terminated in 1716, as a result of the War of the Spanish Succession. The local population mostly took sides and provided troops and resources for Archduke Charles, the pretender, who was arguably expected to maintain the legal status quo. His utter defeat meant the legal and political termination of the autonomous parliaments in the Crown of Aragon, as the Nueva Planta decrees were passed and King Philip V of Spain of the new House of Bourbon sealed the transformation of Spain from a de facto unified realm into a de jure centralized state. The development of modern Catalanism The Renaixenca, rebirth, or Renaissance, was a cultural, historical and literary movement that pursued, in the wake of European Romanticism, the recovery of the Catalans' own language and literature after a century of repression and radical political and economical changes. As time went by, and particularly immediately after the fiasco of the Revolution of 1868 led by the Catalan general Juan Prim and the subsequent fail of the First Spanish Republic 1873 which many Catalans expected an instauration of a federal republic, the movement acquired a clear political character, directed to the attainment of self-government for Catalonia within the framework of the Spanish liberal state. Like most Romantic currents, the Renaixenca gave historical analysis a central role. History, in fact, was an integral part of Catalonia's rebirth. Texts on Catalonia's history—inspired by the Romantic philosophy of history—laid the foundations of a Catalanist movement. Works like Valenti Almiral i Lozers lo Catalanisme, Victor Balaguer's Historia de Catalunya y de la Corona de Aragón and Prat de la Ribas la Nacionalitat Catalana used history as evidence for Catalonia's nationhood. According to Eli Kedori, such claims were common in 19th century nationalist discourse because the past is used to explain the present, to give it meaning and legitimacy. The past reveals one's identity, and history determines one's role in the drama of human development and progress." 36. Publications of histories thus explained why the Catalans constituted a nation instead of a Spanish region or coastal province. At the heart of many of the works of the Renaixenca lay a powerful idea, the Volk. Indeed, the concept of Volk place. Volker played a vital role in mainstream Catalan Romantic nationalism. It has its origins in the writings of German romantics like Friedrich Karl von Savigny, Georg Wilhelm Friedrich Hegel and, most notably, Johann Gottfried Herder. The concept of Volk entered Catalan intellectual circles in the 1830s, stemming from the emphasis on the region's medieval history and philology. 
It first appeared in the writings of Juan Cortada (1805–1868), Marti Dechala (1807–1857), and his discipline, Francesco Javier Lorraine's Y Barba, intellectuals who reinvigorated the literature on the Catalan national character. Inspired by the ideas of Herder, Savigny and the entire Scottish school of common sense, they asked why the Catalans were different from other Spaniards, especially the Castilians, Converse 1997 to 15. For example, Cortada wanted to determine why despite its poor natural environment, Catalonia was so much more successful economically than other parts of Spain. In a series of generalizations, he concluded that the Catalans have succeeded in developing a strong sense of resolution and constancy over the centuries. Another feature of their character was the fact that they were hard-working people." Libera 1983–342. Dechala and Lorraines held a similar understanding of the Catalan national character. They held that two characteristics particular to Catalans were common sense and industriousness. To them. The traditional Catalan seni was a manifestation of the Volksgeist, one which made Catalans essentially different from Castilians Libera 2004-75. The early works on the Catalan Volk would remain on paper long before they entered politics. This is because the Catalan bourgeoisie had not yet abandoned the hope of spearheading the Spanish state Conversi 1997-14. Indeed, in the 1830s, the Renaixenca was still embryonic and the industrial class still thought that it could at least control the Spanish economy. Notions of Catalonia's uniqueness mattered little to a group that believed it could integrate and lead the entire country. But this all changed around 1880. After decades of discrimination from Spanish elites, Catalan industrialists buried their dream of leading Spain. As Villar observes, it is only because, in its acquisition of the Spanish market, the Catalan industrial bourgeoisie did not succeed either in securing the state apparatus or identifying its interests with those of the whole of Spain, in influential opinion, that Catalonia, this little fatherland, finally became the national focal point. 1980 this switch of allegiance was particularly easy because the idea of a Catalan nation had already matured into a corpus of texts about the region's uniqueness and Volksgeist. Inspired by these works of romantic nationalism, the Catalan economic elite became conscious of the growing dissimilitude between the Catalonia's social structure and that of the rest of the nation. Villar 1963-101 Consequently, Romantic nationalism expanded beyond its philosophical bounds into the political arena. Nonetheless, this idea lost its importance, and even were abandoned by many sectors especially from the left-wing Catalanism during the last years of the 19th century and the first third of the 20th century, thanks to the contact with the ideas of Ernest Renan and its civic and republican concept of nation. Antony Rovira I. Virgili (1882–1949), Catalan nationalist and republican historian and politician, gave support to these ideas. In the last third of the 19th century, Catalanism was formulating its own doctrinal foundations, not only among the progressive ranks but also amongst the conservatives. At the same time it started to establish its first political programs e.g. Bases de Manresa, 1892, and to generate a wide cultural and association movement of a clearly nationalistic character. In 1898, Spain lost its last colonial possessions in Cuba and the Philippines, a fact that not only created an important crisis of national confidence, but also gave an impulse to political Catalanism. The first modern political party in Catalonia was the Liga Regionalista. Founded in 1901, it formed a coalition in 1907 with other Catalanist forces from Carlism to Federalists, grouped in the so-called Solidaritat Catalana, and won the elections with the regionalist program that Enrique Prat de la Riba had formulated in his Manifesto La Nacionalitat Catalana 1906. Topic: <laughs> Industrialization and Catalanism. The 18th century Spanish economy depended mostly on agriculture. The social structure stayed hierarchical, if not feudal, while the Catholic Church and Bourbon monarchs wrestled for internal supremacy. 
Into the 19th century, the Napoleonic invasion devastated the country and its early attempts in industrialization and led to chronic political instability, with Spain remaining politically and culturally isolated from the rest of Europe. Unlike in the rest of Spain, the Industrial Revolution made some progress in Catalonia, whose pro-industry middle class strived to mechanize everything, from textiles and crafts to wineries. Industrialization and trade went hand in hand with the proto-nationalist Renaixenca cultural movement, which, annoyed with the shortcomings of the royal court in Madrid, began to fashion an alternative, and that was Catalan identity. To finance their cultural project, a locally bred proto-nationalist intelligentsia sought patronage and protection from Barcelona's industrial barons. This relationship played a decisive role in the development of Catalanism. On the one hand, intellectuals sought to renew Catalan identity as a response to Spain's overall backwardness. They wanted to distance themselves from the Spanish problems by creating a new ontology rooted in Catalan culture, language and worldview. On the other hand, those same intellectuals avoided demands for separation. They knew that their patrons would want Catalan nationalism to include Spain for two reasons. Any secession from Spain would devastate industrial markets and impoverish the region. The Catalan industrial class was unconditionally pro-Spanish at heart. Conversi 1997-18, as Woolard notes, the economic interests in Madrid and the budding Catalan industrialists converged during the 18th century, resulting in cooperation. For the nationalist literati, this meant that Catalanism could promote a national identity, but it had to function within Spain. Furthermore, Barcelona's industrial elite wanted Catalonia to stay part of Spain since Catalonia's industrial markets relied on consumption from other Spanish regions which, little by little, started to join some sort of development. In fact, part of the industrialists' desire to remain part of Spain was their desire for protectionism, hegemony in domestic markets and the push to "...influence Madrid's political choices by intervening in central Spanish affairs." Conversi 1997-18-20, thus, it made no economic sense to promote any secession from Spain. On the contrary, Catalonia's prominent industrialists acted as the Spanish leading economic heads. As Stanley Payne observes, "...the modern Catalan elite had played a major role in what there was of economic industrialization in the 19th century, and had tended to view Catalonia not as the antagonist but to some degree the leader of a freer, more prosperous Spain." 482. Barcelona's bourgeois industrialists even claimed that protectionism and leadership served the interests of the national market or of developing the national economy national meaning Spanish here. Balcells 19. The inclusion of Spain was instrumental to Catalonia's success, meaning that industrialists would not tolerate any secessionist movement. Claiming that independence would have assured nothing but weak markets, an internal enemy and strengthened anarchist movements. And hence, though manufacturers funded the Renaixenca and Catalan nationalism, they demanded that Catalonia stayed part of Spain to ensure economic stability. This federalist-like lobbying had not worked at first, nor did it succeed until the late 1880s. Finally, in 1889, the pro-industrialist Liga Regionalista managed to save the particular Catalan civil code, after a liberal attempt to homogenize the Spanish legal structures Conversi 1997-20. Two years later, they coaxed Madrid into passing protectionist measures, which reinvigorated pro-Spanish attitudes among manufacturers. Then, they also took great profits from Spain's neutrality in World War I, which allowed them to export to both sides, and the Spanish expansion in Morocco, which Catalan industrialists encouraged, since it was to become a fast-growing market for them. Also, by the early 20th century, Catalan businessmen had managed to gain control of the most profitable commerce between Spain and its American colonies and ex-colonies, namely Cuba and Puerto Rico. This nationalist-industrialist accord is a classic example of inclusionary Catalanism. Nationalists might have hoped for an independent Catalonia but their patrons needed access to markets and protectionism. As a result, nationalists could propagate the Catalan identity provided that it coincided with the industrialists' pro-Spanish stance. Because the Liga Regionalista de Catalunya endorsed this compromise, it dominated Catalan politics after the start of the 20th century. Payne notes, 
The main Catalanist party, the Bourgeois Liga, never sought separatism but rather a more discreet and distinctive place for a self-governing Catalonia within a more reformist and progressive Spain. The Liga's leaders ran their 1916 electoral campaign under the slogan Per la España Gran for the Great Spain. 482. The Liga had tempered the nationalist position to one of inclusionary nationalism. It allowed Catalanism to flourish, but demanded that it promote federalism within Spain, and not separation from it. Any deviation from this delicate balance would have enraged those pro-Catalan and Spanish-identifying industrialists. Ultimately, this prevented any moves towards separation while strengthening Catalonia's federal rights after the Commonwealth of Catalonia took power in 1914. Catalanism in the 20th century During the first part of the 20th century, the main nationalist party was the conservative Liga Regionalista, headed by Francis Cambo. For the nationalists, the main achievement in this period was the Commonwealth of Catalonia, a grouping of the four Catalan provinces with limited administrative power. The Commonwealth developed an important infrastructure like roads and phones and promoted the culture professional education, libraries, regulation of Catalan language, study of sciences in order to modernize Catalonia. The failure in being granted in a statute of autonomy in 1919 within the Restoration Regime, led to radicalization of the moderate nationalist parties in Catalonia, leading in turn to the creation of Accio Catalana Catalan Action and also Estat Català Catalan State, drifting apart from the Liga. Among the leaders of Accio Catalana founded in 1922 and chiefly supportive of liberal democratic Catalanism and a Catalanization process were John Bofill, Antony Rovira I. Virgili and Luis Nicolau Dolwer. It also featured an internal elitist faction, moved by the thinking of Charles Moras and Action Francaise of which Josep Vicente Foy and Josep Carbonell were representatives, while John Bofill was ambivalent to the extreme right French thinker. A stat catala, somewhat more attached to the idea of downright independence, was founded right after the creation of Accio Catalana by Francis Macia. The Mancomunitat of Catalonia was dissolved during the dictatorship of Miguel Primo de Rivera in 1925. The anti-Catalan measures taken by dictator Primo de Rivera led to further disappointment among Catalan conservatives, who initially trusted in him because of an earlier support of regionalism prior to his pronunciamiento in September 1923, and also further exacerbation of insurrectionary nationalists. In November 1926 Macia helmed an attempt of military invasion of Catalonia from France which would purposely lead to a civil uprising and the proclamation of the Catalan Republic, he was not able even to get passed through the border. In 1931, the left-wing Catalan nationalist Esquerra Republicana de Catalunya Republican Left of Catalonia, ERC, party, born as a result of the fusion of Catalan Republican Party and Estat Català, won the elections in Catalonia, advocating a Catalan Republic federated with Spain the same day of the proclamation of the Second Spanish Republic. Under pressure from the new Spanish government, the leader of ERC, Francis Macia, accepted an autonomous Catalan government instead, which recovered the historical name of Generalitat de Catalunya. The Catalan government broke with the Republican legality in the events of October 1934, when Luis Campanis, under the influence of the JEREC, rebelled against the Spanish government. A dramatically short period of restoration of democratic and cultural normality was interrupted at its outset by the outbreak of the Spanish Civil War. The autonomous government, which was loyal to the Republic during the 1936–1939 war period, was abolished in 1939, after the victory of the Francoist troops. During the last stages of the war, when the Republican side was on the verge of defeat, Catalan president of the Generalitat, Luis Campanis, rhetorically declared Catalan independence, even though it never materialized due to objections within Catalonia and, eventually, by the defeat of the Second Spanish Republic. Right after the war, Campanis, along with thousands of Spanish Republicans, sought cover in France exiled but because of the, by that time, mutual sympathy between Franco's government and Nazi Germany, he was captured after the fall of France in 1940 and handed to Spanish authorities, who tortured him and which sentenced him to death for military rebellion. He was executed at Montjuic in Barcelona at 6.30 a.m. on October 15, 1940. 
Refusing to wear a blindfold, he was taken before a firing squad of civil guards and, as they fired, he cried, Per Catalunya. Several political or cultural Catalan movements operated underground during the dictatorship of Francisco Franco, which lasted until 1975. A president of the Catalan government was still designated, and operated symbolically in exile. Campanis's successor in exile, Josep Terradellas, kept away from Spain until Franco's death in 1975. When he came back in 1977, the government of Catalonia the Generalitat was restored again. Following the approval of the Spanish constitution in 1978, a statute of autonomy was promulgated and approved in referendum. Catalonia was organized as an autonomous community, and in 1980, Jordi Pujol, from the conservative nationalist party Convergencia Democrática de Catalunya, was elected president and ruled the autonomous government for 23 consecutive years. In contrast, there is no significant political autonomy, nor recognition of the language in the historical Catalan territories belonging to France Roussillon, in the French département of Pyrenees Orientales. Topic. Referenda and political developments since 2006 Currently, the main political parties which define themselves as being Catalan nationalists are Convergencia Democrática de Catalunya, Unió Democrática de Catalunya. The Esquerra Republicana de Catalunya, although deriving from nationalism, refuses the term «nationalism» and prefers to describe itself as pro-independence, so does Soldaritat Catalana. These parties obtained 50.03% of the votes in the 2010 election. Within these parties, there is much divergence of opinion. More radical elements are only content with the establishment of a separate Catalan state. In contrast, more moderate elements do not necessarily identify with the belief that protection of Catalan identity is incompatible within Spain. Others vote for these parties simply as a protest and do not necessarily identify with the overall party platform for example, some people may vote for ERC because they are simply tired of CIU, even though they do not actually desire a leftist Catalan republic. The other way around also occurs, some voters may vote for non-nationalist parties especially the Initiative for Catalonia Greens, ICV, and the Socialists' Party of Catalonia, PSC for reasons of policy, ideology or personal preference, although they share a nationalist viewpoint regarding Catalonia's status within Spain. Some polls, conducted in 2010, show that more than a third of PSC and more than half of ICV voters support Catalonia's independence in the latter case, the percentage is even higher than among convergence and union voters. According to these polls, even 15% of the pro-Spanish Partido Popular voters in Catalonia support the region's independence. In 2006, a referendum was held on amending the Statute of Autonomy of Catalonia of 1979 to further expand the authority of the Catalan government. It was approved by 73.24% of the voters or 35.78% of the census, and became effective as of August 9, 2006. However, the turnout of 48.84% represented an unprecedented high abstention in Catalonia's democratic history. This has been cited both as a symptom of having large sectors in the average populace disengaged or at odds with the politics of identity in Catalonia, and, alternatively, as a symptom of fatigue among Catalan nationalists who would like to see bolder steps towards political autonomy or independence. In this regard, both Esquerra Republicana de Catalunya Catalan pro-independence left wing and Partido Popular Spanish right wing campaigned against having the 2006 Statute of Autonomy passed, the former considered it too little, the latter too much. On September 11, 2012 between 600,000 according to Spanish government delegation in Barcelona and 2 million according to the organizers people gathered in central Barcelona calling for independence from Spain. In September and October, numerous Catalan municipalities declared themselves to be free Catalan territory. On September 11, 2013 the Catalan Way took place, consisting of a 480-kilometre human chain with 1.6 million people in support of Catalan independence. Since the economic crisis of 2008, the government of Artur Mas has moved away from its former regionalist position and come to overtly support Catalan independence. The Catalan government held a non-binding popular consultation on the subject in 2014.
Catalan nationalists polled well in the 2015 election to the Catalan parliament, which Artur Mas declared to be a referendum election. In the 2017 Catalonian parliamentary election the nationalist parties that support the creation of an independent state ERC and CUP obtained a plurality of seats. Catalan-speaking regions Catalonia Valencian Community La Franja Balearic Islands Carqui Andorra Roussillon Alguero See also Catalan countries Catalan independence Anti-Catalanism Catalan symbols Galician nationalism Basque nationalism Notes <laughs>